one small town. Two beliefs, three people. This was the Scopes trial. The year was 1925. The location, Dayton, Tennessee. John Butler presented the idea of a law that prohibits the teaching of evolution, the theory that man evolved from monkey, originally put forth by Charles Darwin. The state of Tennessee, with the help of Governor Austin P., created this educational barrier. The American Civil Liberties Union, or ACLU, believed this law was unconstitutional. They then put the word out that they needed somebody to fight the law. John Scopes, who had previously admitted to breaking the Butler Act, saw this as an opportunity to draw attention and money to his small, shrinking city. He was eventually put on trial and found guilty for teaching evolution. After John Scopes was found guilty, many others, including Susan Epperson, took up his cause. Eventually, the case found its way to the Supreme Court, where the Butler Act was found unconstitutional, breaking the barrier of teaching evolution in schools. This shapes the way that Americans are taught in modern society, as well as caused divisions in the United States belief system. John Scopes contacted the ACLU and came out saying he may have taught evolution while acting as a substitute biology teacher. Tennessee put him on trial at the Ray County Courthouse. It gained even more traction when William Jennings Bryan, a famous lawyer and presidential candidate, took the spot of the prosecutor. One source says William Jennings Bryan was instrumental in getting the resolution passed in his adoptive state. When Clarence Darrow, an atheist lawyer, found out, he volunteered to be John's defendant free of charge. The trial began on July 10, 1925, the middle of summer. Everyone attending the first day, the bailiff, judge, jury, Darrow, Scopes, Brian, and a chimpanzee named Joe Mindy all took their seats. The first ever radio broadcast trial was open with a prayer. This right away angered Darrow as it was known by all that he did not believe in a higher power. He once said, the fact that my father was a heretic always put him on the defense, and later, we children thought it was only right and loyal that we should defend his, his father's, cause. The ego-filled opening statements began, followed by the witnesses. Darrow had scholars on evolution take the stand for his case. Darrow brought them until the judge, John Ralston, stopped him. Brian chuckled at the fact that Darrow's defense was crumbling from beneath him. Darrow quickly became even more angry and tense. Suddenly, he was not so mad. He had thought of a mischievous plan. If he could not have put up his scholars, he would put up his client's prosecutor. Once on the stand, he began asking questions to Brian about the Bible and the creation of Earth. According to the transcripts, Brian asked, Mr. Brian, do you think the Earth was created in six days? Brian responded, no, sir, not six days of 24 hours. After more pushing, Brian, angered, said, it doesn't make any difference whether God created the world in six days, six years, six million years, or even 600 million years. This is exactly what the defense needed to come back with. Well, if you can interpret those things in the Bible, why can't we interpret the story of creation of humans in an evolutionary sense? He proved William's beliefs do line up and made a fool of him. The trial continued. In and out of the court wheel, Brian and Darrow had very heated arguments. Speaking of heated, the old courthouse did not have air conditioning. With fear of the floors buckling due to how many visitors and reporters were in attendance, the judge moved the trial outdoors. Brian spent his free time writing a perfect closing statement to win the case. Darrow got word of this through the grapevine and again made a fool of Brian. Darrow suggested that to save time, his client should be found guilty. This prevented Brian from making a closing statement, says one source. Through to the defendant put much effort into the trial, Brian still won the case and John Thomas Scopes was fined $100, although it was later appealed to the Tennessee Supreme Court and redacted. Sadly, about a week after the trial concluded, William Jennings Bryan passed away. Although the death certificate said he died from diabetes, many believed he died of stress and embarrassment during the trial. As mentioned earlier, the small town was shrinking until the trial. The small town's economy started booming as a steady influx of people took their temporary residence at the Aqua Hotel. With a room full of telegram machines and multiple beds in all the rooms, reporters and citizens from all over the country came to see the trial. The town was described as a circus for many reporters and locals. Many newspapers wrote about the trial. They wrote about one of Darrow's speeches towards the beginning of the trial, 
While most publications applauded him, the Memphis Commercial Appeal called him the Antichrist. The Scopes trial got so big that it brought light to the barrier of the Butler Act. And while it was not broken, a large crack to the other side of education was made. Forty years later, a woman named Susan Epperson advanced her trial so far that the Butler Act was found unconstitutional and repealed. Susan Epperson fought the same law. She continued appealing until she reached the Supreme Court of the United States, where the law was found unconstitutional, breaking the barrier of education. Today, science teachers spend time teaching evolution theory. They often take lessons on how to make all students feel comfortable with the material. Throughout history, opinions have changed over what is taught in schools. After this trial, new laws came out almost flipping the script. Intelligent design is no longer taught, whereas more secular ideas, such as evolution, are. Rather than giving the theories equal teaching time, they are uneven. Whether you believe in God or you are an atheist, this trial affects how people are taught. The idea of social Darwinism and evolution even came back into play during the World War, where Germans believed that they were the super race, an evolved human species. The Scopes trial helped make a difference between the past, present, and potentially the future. The Scopes trial.